Well, probably ought to get started. Uh, as you could tell, my name is Todd Hatfield with HECO Industrial Service Groups. I'm uh, Vice President of Engineering and Repair. Been involved with the company from the time that about 1980 all the way to now. Graduated from college in 1985, electrical engineering. Uh, from that point, I was involved. We had a coil manufacturing division, HECO Coil. Was involved with that, managing that and managing uh, the uh, repair facility and doing engineering. So kind of had did a lot of things over a period of time. Um, but my background primarily now is repairing, solving problematic motor designs, improving motor designs, uh, giving customers ideas on how to take a problematic motor and make it better and most of the time being able to do that with the existing motor. Conditions that impact motor life. Talked about it a little bit earlier. You've got a condition here where you have a, a speed torque curve. No problem at start, but notice the, the pull-up torque is dipping below this flat line conveyor load. In this case, that motor would stall. It would never accelerate. It would start to accelerate and then drop. Um, and that's just showing an example of a motor that could be misapplied. Knowing what the shape of the core curves are, knowing the pump speed torque curve, knowing the motor curve, you can properly apply the motor and make sure that you're not gonna have issues. I'll go over this over and over again because it happens all the time. Uh, impact of supply voltage plus minus 10% and even 20, you'll notice again at 90%, you decrease your torque 19% from full load. You, uh, in, you uh, decrease your full load speed, you decrease your starting current. Not necessarily a bad thing, but what you have to recognize is the designer has to make sure that that motor design operating at 90% voltage can actually turn the load and get it to accelerate. And then the impact in the other direction when the voltage is over, it actually increases the starting current increases your torque so you don't have an issue in that direction. So a thousand horsepower motor uh, operating with that 90% voltage or 10% below nameplate, same thing. It's gonna run at about an 800 <clears throat> horsepower level. The motor will overheat if you try to drive it to a thousand horsepower in this example, that voltage stays down. Torque is proportional to voltage squared Torque is related to that formula, so therefore horsepower is proportional to voltage squared as well. This is an example of a motor that we were, as I was talking, your original curve at 100% volts is here. In this example, the supplier uh, or the manufacturer and the machine designer didn't get together and they didn't give them the curve at 80% volts. Well, this had a voltage drop enough that when you're driving the load, you cross the load line here and it caused the motor to uh, decelerate and stall. And what ends up happening is you, this picture isn't showing it well, but there's cracks to the joint of the shorting ring and the bar. You create tremendous heat in that condition. Phase voltage on balance again, um, or Again, the impact of phase voltage on balance now between phases is the formula two times the phase voltage on balance squared. So with a 3% phase voltage on balance, you get an 18% increase in temperature. It's huge. And it's not well understood and it happens and it causes failures that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, NEMA recommends you try to keep that unbalanced at, in that 1% range. That's NEMA, the real world sometimes doesn't follow that. It isn't that power isn't produced decently, but by the time it might reach you, you might have loads that are pulling from different phases that could actually cause some of these conditions or within your own plan if, the, if you're not distributing the load properly. But uh, it, you could see what would happen if you were at 5%. The heat is so rapid that you will damage a motor very quickly. Um, 
This is one of the hardest things to diagnose because it'll come through as an overheated winding. And if you don't get information from the customer, what is the actual operating voltage on all three phases, on start, during operation, that kind of thing, you might not discover this. This is an example of wine, or, uh, motor winding life with a phase on balance. Um, just to go simply that I said 5% could really result in a big problem. Well, in this example, a normal motor at 155C class F insulation calculated out to be about 20,000 hours with a 5% unbalance. The motor's only gonna operate approximately 600 hours. It will heat up, believe it or not, that rapidly and fail. Motors, um, in general, we say a motor, quality motor is gonna last in excess of 20 years, maybe longer. Um, in reality, because of all these different things we're talking about, in a lot of cases, not all cases, you'll get a lifespan that's much less than what was expected. Temperature effect on motor life, go over this over and over again. The uh, every 10 degrees C that's increased in the motor operating temperature causes the winding life to be cut in half. Uh, that's due to overload, in, inadequate ventilation, dirt buildup, phase unbalance, higher low voltage, all these things can factor in. Bearing life is very similar. 50 to 75% of that temperature, but a similar result, 10 degree increase in bearing temp can result in about a 50% decrease in life. It's a rule of thumb. Insulation life versus, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, you're, you've got the heat around the bearing, but you've got good heat dissipation here. And then I'm sorry, for every 10 degrees C that you drop the temperature, you actually double the life. Very good point. So good yeah, well it is. And it, it just the reality of operating motors in the real world, this is what you're up against. This is just another example. Uh, and there's a chart here where you can calculate how the winding life will be cut in half or doubled by applying it to a different insulation class. Fairly simple, but again, the causes of temperature increase, ambient air, contamination, blocking airflow, uh, load heat impacting the motor, other motors surrounding the area, plug filters, uh, motor enclosures not providing fresh inlet air, overloading under the conditions we talked about, under voltage, phase unbalance, and so on. This calculation just shows an example of a motor when operated at 120 degrees um, will be about 280,000 hours. When you increase it to 130 degrees, again, you cut it in half. 